it's me again coming on today. Uh, you know, in these last weeks, I've been talking a lot about us chosens and how we are misunderstood and how we're not on, like, pretty much we're social pariahs or we're truly popular or we go all over the place, right? And I wanted to talk about a specific person and I know that you guys might get mad at me because a lot of you might be American. But I'm bringing up this topic because I am truly inspired by this person in the sense of who they are as a character in this larger play of the world. Uh, I'm bringing up Trump solely because I want to showcase to you guys what type of character he is. And please know that I've got both good and I've got bad and I've got the reality. So please reserve your opinions about what I'm going to say until the end. I'm not trying to persuade anybody to vote to or for him or against him. I just want to discuss what we see as human beings, what we've seen throughout this time, and what may be taking place. Simply because if you guys remember, or if any of you have watched when I put up my first video two years ago, I had said back in 2022 that I felt like Trump was going to come back and, and go ahead for the presidency. So now that that has come to pass and we're all reliving it now, I wanted to talk about the things that he's done simply because I feel like he also is attached to a lot of other major players or other major characters and why people don't correlate him with other major characters, some like Yeshua, um, and I'll explain why I say this at the end. And please don't think that I'm saying Trump and Jesus are the same person. That is not what I'm saying. Today's topic is about the double-edged sword. Today's topic is about um, looking at, per, at people not only as the hero, but also as the anti-hero. Okay, so why? If you could see my board back here, I'm just going to like talk about it a little briefly. But that's basically what I'm after today because I feel like in this very heated time of of our uh, political, uh, I'm not even American and I've got this, this guy's got me thinking a lot because he's made me think a lot since the beginning. So many people I know are like, I don't like Trump, he's such a this, he's such a that. Like, they always said things, he's a criminal, he's a slanderer, he's mocked the disabled, he's a bigot, he's lied about um, opponents as he was trying to raise to his candidacy. He's racist, he's insulted the military, he's sexist, he's a dictator, uh, he's uneducated, he never takes, he's lacking responsibility, he doesn't step forward when responsibility needs to be taken. Um, he's reckless, he's abused his pardoning power, he's lying about uh, wanting to reclaim us to old values. Now please understand that I did not make these up, these are actual comments that the world has shown and, and decreed as what he is. Now, when we think about all those negative attributes that he has or has been seen to have had or been commented to have seen to be had, keep those in mind, okay? Now, on the positive side, okay, what he has done or what he is seen as is the king of the poor. You know, I would say a lot of people um, really feel like he's a hero of some sort of for the everyday person because they relate a lot to him. And uh, let's say he's done a lot for bills for the indigenous persons. He's enforced the idea of unity, ironically, with his whole idea of um, let's make America great again, right? Um, he upholds the old values or like at least seemingly upholds the values. And when I say by old values, I always think of 1950s, you know, the nuclear home, the nuclear life, you know, a uh, husband bringing home the bacon, wife at home, pregnant and barefoot in the kitchen, that type, you know, a woman's uh, not heard, not um, seen, but not heard type. Uh, he tends to uphold those kind of old school values. Um... He's actually been one of the only presidents to create three Middle East Accords to try to bring peace to the Middle East. A lot of people don't comment on that. Because it's funny, and all of his uh, his good things have kind of been silent. And I'm going to talk about why that is. Um, he's actually done a lot in terms of stopping wars or preventing wars. If you notice that as soon as Biden came in, he kind of undid a lot of what Trump did solely to allow the accruement of anxiety in the Middle East. But a lot of people don't recognize that, that when he pulled all of those 
militants out of the Middle East that certain things would pop off and that was what it was designed to create. Uh, let's say, for example, like with him stopping wars like Tehran in Iran, he uh, he really did put forth his foot on that and he stopped the outbreak there. Uh, he bolstered Obamacare. I know it makes no sense. Some people would see this as a negative, but technically all of his uh, his laughter and his um, his repeated mockery of the Obamacare actually brought a lot of relevance to it. And caused a lot of people on either the Democratic or Republican side to uh, vote for and or against. But at least keep it relevant so that certain um, positions and moves and bills would be created as such. So sometimes a negative can create a positive. And that's why I'm talking about him in the first place. Uh, he also was trying to stop issues with immigration. As you guys all know, he was saying, oh, you know, I'm going to put the wall up. I'm going to put the wall up. But... In, in reality, he wasn't able to achieve that. He did start it all up. I kind of thought it was kind of funny because I was like, well, who are you going to hire to put the wall up? You're kicking them all out. But anyways, I'm sorry that that was just a bad joke. But um, I think he did put a lot of um, bills in place to kind of prevent uh, the influx and inflow of a lot of immigration issues. So there's that. Um he might have been one of the only people that tried to hold uh, China accountable for that COVID outbreak. He stopped all the travel from China coming into the United States. He understood that hitting them in their pockets might be the way to uh, get their attention. And that's something that a lot of people didn't do. For example, I'm here in Canada. And my prime minister let a freaking uh, Chinese, uh, well, they qualified as spy, but scientists come to our labs right during the whole time of the epidemic and gave the, you know, the, the scientists leeway to all of our labs. So if you can understand, Trump actually was putting his foot down for his people. So in that record, I can totally, you know, respect that. Um, he tried really hard to stop the furthering of the idea of the depression that may have occurred during um during the COVID times because everybody was down and out no one was working and he did that by instating things like the cares act so you can understand that that's a lot of positive maybe a lot of people don't realize that but he had both both fields now what is the reality to me this is my opinion but i want you guys to understand that these characters are pivotal in the crux of our evolution of our ascension the reality is, is that what people are doing with this, with this person is they're buying a personality. They're buying into a personality versus a politician. Now, I understand that it doesn't, there aren't a lot of uh, parameters for what the president needs to be other than maybe 35. I think uh, they have to be uh, a citizen at least for 14 years. Um, hence why he's most likely going to be able to, should he be voted in to run president at, in jail, if he does get sent to jail. Uh, so I'm just saying that in this case, unfortunately, a lot of people have bought into his personality and his persona versus realizing that he's actually, uh, not a politician. And I think most of us do understand that he's also a businessman, but really and truly the reality is, is that people have bought into the persona. Uh, he, of all things, and this is what I wanted to say, he is a double-edged sword, and I will explain why I say this, because he is a system buster, okay? Huge system buster. He's just like us chosen. For all I know, he could be, but I'm trying to say this, is that even if he's not chosen, he's actually taking a direct um, action to be this system buster, and it could work for him or against him, but I think it's going to work for him, in, at least in this time frame, because certain things haven't come to pass. But um, he uses the slogan, let's make America great again. However, what people may not realize, and this is what I mean about the double-edged sword, is that people's ideas of what makes America great are all different. Okay, some think it's the American dream, some think it's that 1950s mentality, some think it's just a place where you can prosper and grow. However, his actual existence as a politician kind of goes against let's make America great again. Reason being because he's done so many shady things and i know he hasn't been found guilty for all of them and you want to know something he probably never will be 
But what the reality is, is that the more he picks and probes and uh, decimates what you guys call the Constitution, what's going to happen is that that Constitution is not going to hold as much weight as it once did. So things like that, showing the people and the populace that it's kind of like putting a, a bull in a china shop and when the bull destroys everything, can you still call it a china shop? You know what I mean? It's probably just a, it's a house of broken, broken plates. So the thing that I'm trying to say is that he's trying to show us that we don't need politics. He's trying to show us that we don't really need law. And he's not showing us that we don't really need government. Why? Because there's a frailty to it. He has managed to do things that no president could ever do. Okay. And it's like, let's just think about it this way. Poor Bill Clinton got a freaking blow job and got kicked out of his, his residency as president. And I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that little, little errors, you know, in his decision making skills at that time got him kicked out. Whereas this gentleman has managed to thwart all of those topics and quite brilliantly. And I can say uh, that is what's going to be ideal about Trump. Now, for those of you that may be considering voting for him, please understand that he himself has his own agenda. Don't ever take that away from you. If you are also trying to vote for him because you think that he's going to instill this new system or this promised system or this 1950s system, um, you know, where, every, where there's one man and he takes care of the household and the woman stays home and all that, if, and, and, and whites are, are, you know, the supreme beings. If that's the way you think and feel, and I'm not saying that that's all Americans, I'm just saying that there are some out there in the United States that feel like that's what he represents. Now, the thing is, is that yes, he may be saying the slogan, let's make America great again, but it's such an ambiguous statement that it's going to leave that, that idea in all Americans' minds because every single American is going to have a different idea of what makes America great. Like, obviously... If you're a woman, you're going to see it differently than a man. If you're a black, you're going to see it different than a white person. If you're Latino, you're going to see it different than a black person. If you're, you know, a Latino, you're going to see it different than a white person. Everyone's going to have their different versions or views of what makes America great. So when he does something like play with an ambiguous statement, like let's make America great again, he's actually just instilling a, a, a thought process in the minds of the Americans that allow them to feel like their potential dreams personal potential dreams are possible and there's nothing wrong with that but what i will say is that he there is no way to instill these older facades of self of the nuclear family simply because it doesn't exist in the parameters of our our current system okay this uh commercialism uh, consumerism system would never allow for that so if you are somebody that is maybe going to vote for him because you think that's what he's going to instill it's impossible because realistically his mo just like all billionaires are millionaires they're not going to break down a system that makes them money so realistically that 1950s way of being is impossible because of the way we've cultivated our culture to go after uh just buying things right 1950s it was more wholesome we've lost that wholesome mentality so therefore we can be bought that mentality is not something that's going to be encompassed in everything in the american dream because that system that 1950 system is not attainable at this time no company is going to go give that man three times what he's making right now just so that he can watch his family and his wife can stay home if you haven't noticed, even in America and Canada, we have some of the poorest laws when it comes to women staying home and taking care of the family, the nuclear family idea. So realistically, what people don't realize is that when you're buying into a slogan, just know that that's an ideal that you've placed in your mind. Does he represent a double-edged sword? Hell yeah. Because he is going to shake things up to the point that we're hopefully... Hopefully, human beings are going to realize like, hey, maybe our system's flawed. Maybe our system doesn't work. If this guy can come be a, a bull in a china shop and cause all of this good and bad regardless, all he's trying to show people is that it's unnecessary. You're basic. He's basically trying to show people like I'm the messenger. I'm the middleman. You take out me 
and you realize as the individual, all 350 million odd of you, that you are the ones that have the power. That's what he's truly showing you. Because the thing is, is that the reason why a lot of people resonate with him is because he's different. The reason why a lot of people resonate with him is because he is doing things that haven't been done before. All he's doing is stirring up the heart, he's stirring up the wiles inside of most human beings because we're so tired of this system. But a lot of people feel defeated. A lot of people feel like they are not championed in this world. And for some reason, Trump's character or this alien or this uh, personality persona I'm talking about seems to embody that because he's trying to kick ass and take names. He's trying to change things up. He's trying to not be the normal norm. And that's what really, you know, sits with people and allows them to feel like there is somebody out there trying to champion for them. Now, if we could just eliminate him as the, you know, middleman in a sense and realize that, but it will come from people such as himself to showcase that it can be done. Things can change. You don't have to stay by the cookie cutter box because realistically, like I said, even with the law, with the politics, it's like a lot of people I notice are like, oh, my God, how is Trump not in jail yet? Oh, my God. First off, the man hired, you know, three judges on the Supreme Court. That's never happened before. So I'm not trying to say that he's bought into it, but I'm saying most of those people might be in favor of him simply because they have the position they hold because of him. He's not a ding dong. OK, he knows how to how to place people and do things. Another thing is that people don't realize is that, yes, that whole idea with the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, the Third Amendment, because of the insurrection, he's the only president to ever cause something like that. And the thing is, is that that didn't cause Americans to go up in arms. That didn't cause Americans the result that I personally, as a Canadian watching, thought it would create. Because the thing is, is that people saw him as a hero for doing that. Some people saw him as a villain for doing that. But how did those two, how does insurrection correlate with let's make America great again? Think about this, okay? Insurrection means you're going after America, okay? Making America great again by insurrecting is kind of a catch-22. It's an oxymoron. You can't make something great again if you're decimating the system that it stands on. So please understand that he is a system buster because he's actually causing two things to collapse on itself, which is the ideal thing for a double-edged sword character, okay? And I'm going to talk about one other character, and you'll see what I mean by the correlation. Let's say, for example, two ways that he has so much power that people don't realize is like, for example, when he told people to ingest Lysol and Clorox, there were actual participants that did it. The, you know, the poison control center at that time realized that there was an influx. So he has power, this Trump character. So there is also one last thing I will say. Even if most people believe in the judicial system or in politics, politics, it's all a numbers game. Politics is all about power. So the law will also conform to whoever is in power. Because as we've seen, like even with this hung or what should have been a hung jury, but it wasn't. It was actually like, oh, no, we found him guilty. A lot of persons don't realize that they want him to be found guilty because they didn't react at the times that they should have. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that they want to, especially the Democrats, want to uphold this version of the cookie cutter life that will not exist. Doesn't matter if it's a Republican running the show or a, Dem a Democrat running the show. This ideal uh, idea of the family, the this, the that, the loving home, the suburban, suburbia life, all of that is a falsity because it's unattainable with the parameters that the commercial system has created. So if people are living in a pipe dream of what they think any politician can create, that's really not what's going to happen. And lastly, like I will say, people who are very attached to Mr. Epstein uh, most likely know a lot about skeletons and closets. So you got to understand that it doesn't matter what the, you know, the media is showing you. Okay. The reality is, is that I'm pretty sure Mr. Trump knows a lot about a lot of people. So we wouldn't want all of that coming out. And I'm pretty sure he has a lot of pull of strings of different measures and power to him. So this is not a video to say vote for him or don't vote for him. But just understand that for those of you that will or will not be voting for him, 
you are voted for assistant buster so realistically he's not good or bad he's not any of the sort he's a double-edged sword now why i say that is because even if people perceive him as being bad he's actually created some good much like and this is why i said don't correlate him with yeshua but this is what i mean yeshua came to this planet right yeshua came here to show people what it means to be ultimately good ultimately grateful ultimately gracious he was a healer he loved all he didn't care what color creed you fell into and all he did was show human beings love that's all he did he didn't do anything else but show love compassion now the funny thing is much like mr trump his actions were all geared towards the positive trying to show people how to ascend how to show people how to grow out of their into their oversoul and how to connect with the father the mother etc but what took place after his death was the opposite much like trump okay he does one thing and it causes the opposite the same happened with yeshua yeshua came to show us love and what got created the roman catholic church the crusades all of these religions that started fighting over who's right and who's wrong no love in sight okay so the thing is is that like i said when it comes to politics or when it comes to a person in a double-edged sword character profile all of these types of characters are designed this way so that it causes this this influx and this difference okay because the thing is most people would be like well jesus was so great you know but yet they put him up on a cross yet his own friends ditched him and disregarded him you know except for miriam because she had his back because that's what you know um twin flames do for their for who they love they they stand up for them until the bitter end and they they back them you know what i mean so um i can totally relate to miriam and yeshua's twin flame journey because it's like that's the type of journey i want i want somebody who's gonna back me not somebody who's gonna run away like a little bitch you know what i mean i know i'm sorry to say but that's what the apostles did they spent all that time with yeshua and they still turned their back on him you know what i mean so these characters that play these double-edged swords are so crucial because they spawn a whole revolution of change, either for the good or for the bad. But what I'm saying is that they are imperative to the formulation of our existence and they are necessary. So the next time you want to talk smack about Trump or you want to talk good about Trump, realize that he's a pivotal player in this ascension game. 